What is up everyone and welcome to Cash a Competitive where we play some of the most powerful cards in Magic the Gathering and make some of the worst plays possible. For those of you who don't know, we like to play a lot of jank and off meta commanders, so we thought it'd be a little interesting to play a pod just of Planeswalker commanders. And about 15 games later, we realized why nobody ever does this. There's already so few Planeswalker Commanders, and there's even fewer playable ones, so to get a good game for this pod took quite a while. We had to find decks that synergized well with each other so they didn't just drag on and get a little stale, but I think we finally got one. We have a game for you that is probably my favorite game we've played since we've been back, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. I do want to make one little disclaimer. You may notice that Adam, in the video, has a hair tie around his wrist when well, clearly he doesn't need one. What ended up happening was we recorded this game and it was a great game. And I went to edit it and realized there were fewer pixels on the screen than I have IQ. And even if I was the smartest guy in the world, that's not a lot of pixels. What happened was when I went to set up the recording equipment one day, I somehow like reset the camera settings. So it recorded in 360p. And well, that wouldn't make for a very good video. So what we did is we got the guys back together and replayed the game play by play, not only because I think this game was really cool and has a lot of interesting things in it, but after playing Planeswalker Commanders for about 15 or 16 games, I never want to see another Planeswalker in my life, so we decided to just do this. If you have a problem with that, I would like you to sit down at a table with Bill and play against the turn one Tangle Wire about six different times. It really starts to get old after a while. So enough of that disclaimer, let's talk about the decks we're playing today. Hi, I'm back doing the deck intros because like I said before, we recorded in 360p. Going first in this game was Nate L playing Teferi Temporal Archmage. The goal of this deck, aptly titled Chain Veil Teferi, is to play Teferi, play Chain Veil, and then have enough mana producing artifacts to essentially go infinite with Teferi's negative ability, and then constantly reactivating Chain Veil to get infinite Teferi activations, which essentially lets you generate infinite mana and loot through your library. Going second was Bill playing Minsk and Boo Timeless Heroes. This is a gruel kind of staxy deck that looks to win through combo lines involving Dockside Extortionist and Teamer Sabertooth, and then you can actually use Minsk as a draw engine if you have infinite mana. The way this works is you cast your commander, you get a free hamster, and then you use the negative two ability to sacrifice the hamster to draw a card and deal the one damage to Minsk, killing it, letting you repeat this process to draw your entire library and then win through something like a finale of devastation. Going third was Jordan, and he played Amanatu the Fate Shifter. This is a blink based deck that has two main win lines. The first one using an animate dead effect on Abdel Adrian Gorian's ward, which is essentially a white world or dragon. Essentially it lets you blink Adrian infinitely, get infinite one ones, and then if you have an ETB effect that can ping people like a corpse knight, you can just kill the board. The other main win line is using the commander Amanatu and Felidar Guardian to essentially get infinite blinks between those two creatures and getting infinite creature ETBs, again winning through something like a corpse knight. And finally, Adam went last playing Dahada Binder of Wills. Similar to Jordan's Amanatu list, this deck looks to use an animate dead effect and Abdel to get infinite creature ETBs. But due to the lack of blue, this deck is built more to be a Turbo Adnos style of deck rather than a grindy control based deck. But now with the deck intros out of the way, let's get into the gameplay. This Planeswalker only commander game started not with the person who rolled the highest, but with Bill, who played a gemstone caverns exiling a mountain. And then, well, it still didn't go to the first player because Jordan also played a gemstone caverns exiling a talisman of dominance. Finally, Nate L goes to his turn, plays an island, casts a preordain, keeping both on top and drawing a card, and he then passes the turn to Bill. Bill plays his second land for turn in Arid Mesa and then immediately cracks it for a stomping ground. He then casts a Tinder Wall, and then cracks that Tinder Wall to cast a Jessica's Will. He targets Adam, who has 7 cards in his hand, so Bill floats 7 red mana, and Bill then casts an Orcish Lumberjack, and follows that up by casting a turn 1 Wheel of Fortune, with 3 mana left over. Everybody discards their hand, draws 7 new cards, and Bill then casts another turn 1 Tangle Wire. I, I don't know how this happens, but Bill somehow casts his third turn 1 Tangle Wire of this pod. Anyway, with nothing left, he passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan taps his land due to Tanglewire, and then shocks in a Hollowed Fountain, losing two life. He uses this mana to cast a turn one Mystic Remora. With nothing left, he ships the turn to Adam. Adam shocks in a Sacred Foundry, and then for zero mana casts a Lotus Petal. He then more than meets the eyes, I guess, of Flame War Brash Veteran, and with that, he passes to Nate L. Nate L taps his land for Tanglewire, and then plays another island as his land for turn. He then for one mana casts a Mana Vault, not paying for Mystic Remora, obviously, 
and for two mana, he casts a Phyrexian Revoker, naming Bill's commander, Minsk and Boo. With nothing left, he ships the turn off to Bill. Bill goes to his turn, removes a fading counter from the Tangle Wire, and then taps three things to satisfy his own Tangle Wire trigger. He then plays a forest as his land, and then activates his Orcish Lumberjack to sacrifice a forest in order to generate enough mana to cast his commander, Minsk and Boo. He does not pay for Mr. Grimora, and with nothing left and not able to activate it, he passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan goes to his turn, and in response to the Tangle Wire trigger, he floats all of his available mana. The Tangle Wire trigger then resolves, and he uses that mana to pay for the Mystic or Mora upkeep. He then goes to his first main phase and plays a Command Tower as his land, and follows that up by casting a Sensei's Divining Top. He then goes to his end step and discards two cards due to hand size. Adam goes to his turn, taps his permanence for Tangle Wire, and then plays an Ancient Tomb as his land. He then casts a Heart of Kirin, taking two from the Ancient Tomb and not paying for Remora, and with nothing left to do, ships the turn off to Nate L. Nate L starts his turn just like everybody else, tapping his permanence for Tangle Wire. He takes one damage from Mana Vault remaining tapped, and he then in his first main phase plays an island as his land and immediately taps it to cast a Ponder. Does not pay for Remora, and he decides to not shuffle his library and draws a card. He then for zero mana casts a Chrome Mox, not paying for Remora, and attempts to imprint a Dig Through Time. In response to this imprint trigger, Bill casts a Force of Vigor, not paying for Mystic or Mora, and attempting to destroy both the Phyrexian Revoker and the Flame War. The reason for this is he wants to activate his commander, and he wants his commander to not die, in case you're wondering why he doesn't target the Mystic or Mora. This resolves, the permanents are destroyed, and Nate L then completes the Crow Mox cast and passes a turn off to Bill. Bill goes to his turn, removes one Fade Encounter from Tangle Wire, taps two permanents for Tangle Wire, and then plays a Forest as his land. He then activates his commander's plus one ability in order to pump up his hamster. He then plays his own Phyrexian Revoker, and when it enters, he names Sensei's Divining Top to try to keep Jordan off a little bit of his value. He then goes to combat and swings four damage at Jordan. Jordan takes the damage, and Bill with nothing left, ships the turn to Jordan. Jordan on his turn decides to keep his Remora around, and also taps to satisfy the Tangle Wire. He then plays an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth as his land for turn, and then for zero mana, he casts a Chrome Mox. When it enters the battlefield, he imprints a Ranger Captain of Eos, and he follows that up by casting a Talisman of Progress. He then goes to pass the turn and discards an Urza's Saga due to hand size. Adam, on his turn, starts his turn off like every Magic player wishes they could by tapping permanence for Tangle Wire. He then plays a Gemstone Caverns as his land, and then for two mana, casts a Dockside Extortionist. It enters the battlefield successfully, generating eight treasures. He then decides to cast his commander, Dahada, Binder of Wills, not paying for the Mystic Remora. He immediately activates the negative 3 ability on Tahada, revealing 3 lands and a Demonic Tutor, all of those go to his graveyard, and he gets 4 more treasures. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Nate L. Nate L goes to his turn, taps for Tangle Wire, takes a damage from Mana Vault, and, with nothing left to do, just ships the turn right off to Bill. Bill goes to his turn, removes another Fade Encounter from Tangle Wire, taps a permanent for Tangle Wire, and then immediately goes to combat, swinging 4 damage at Jordan. Jordan takes the damage, and in Bill's second main phase, he activates his commander's negative 2 ability with the intention of sacrificing his hamster to draw 4 cards. However, in response to this activation, Jordan, for 1 mana, casts Swords to Plowshares, attempting to exile the hamster. The exile is successful, and then the Minx ability resolves. Now, unfortunately, I need to mention a little misplay here. Bill was a little bit too busy just thinking about how he could subscribe to Casual Competitive on YouTube for free or leave a comment to help with the algorithm or like the video if he's enjoying it. So remember that the negative two ability on his commander didn't actually target a creature. It just requires you to sacrifice a creature when it fully resolves. So after Boo dies, Bill still needs to sacrifice a creature and likely he would have sacrificed the Phyrexian Revoker, which wouldn't have drawn him a card since that's not a hamster. And it dying doesn't really change the game since the Revoker wasn't really stopping anything at this point. It would have just done too damage to someone's face. So it's not the biggest deal, we just wanted to point it out. Bill then completes his turn by playing a forest. Jordan on his turn pays 3 mana to keep his remora around, and taps one thing for Tangle Wire. He then moves to go to his end step, and in response to this movement, Adam casts a Vampiric Tutor, not paying for Mystic Remora. Adam searches up a card to the top of his library, loses 2 life, and Jordan then continues to pass the turn, discarding down to hand size, and he discards an Abdel Adrian, Gorian's Ward. Now, this is important because this is basically World Gorger Dragon, but on a white creature, and he wants it in his graveyard. And thanks to Remora, now it's there for free. The turn is then fully passed to Adam, who goes to his turn, taps one thing for Tangle Wire, and then for two mana, taking two damage from Ancient Tomb, he casts an Animate Dead, not paying for Mystic Remora and floating a colorless. Now, for those of you who weren't paying attention, he can Animate Dead Abdel and get infinite treasures from Dockside Extortionist. 
So seeing this, Nate L decides to tap for two mana and cast a mana drain attempting to stop it, not paying for Remora. The anime dead is successfully countered, so Adam decides to crew his Heart of Kirin using both counters from Dahada, just crewing it twice essentially, in order to kill Dahada. He then casts a Jeweled Lotus, not paying for Mystic Remora, and uses this to help recast his commander. Of course, not paying for Remora. He then activates the negative 3 ability on Dahada to reveal a Savine's Reclamation, an Enlightened Tutor, a Mana Vault, and a Felidar Guardian. These all go to his graveyard and he gets 4 treasures, and he then decides, you know what, it was a pretty good idea, so I'm gonna do it again, and he flashes back Savine's Reclamation, targeting the Necromancy in his graveyard, and the Animate Dead, not paying for Mr. Kimura, obviously, and the copy of Savine's Reclamation targeting Animate Dead is attempting to resolve first. The spell successfully resolves, and when Animate Dead enters the battlefield, he targets Abdel from Jordan's graveyard, and when Abdel enters the battlefield, he targets Dockside and Animate Dead with the trigger. This loop allows for infinite blinks of Abdel and whatever else you're exiling, so if this is successful, Adam would essentially get infinite treasures and infinite 1-1s one from Abdel. In response to this targeting, Jordan casts an unsubstantiate targeting Abdel, attempting to put it back into his own hand. In response to the unsubstantiate, Adam casts a disenchant, targeting Animate Dead. The reason for this is that if this disenchant resolves, the Abdel will actually go back into Jordan's graveyard since the Animate Dead will be destroyed and there'll be nothing tying Abdel to the mortal world. And since Adam still has a necromancy from Savine's Reclamation just waiting to resolve, he could just try again. So in response to this, Jordan casts a Swan Song, targeting the Disenchant, successfully countering it, and then the Abdel trigger resolves and exiles the two permanents from Adam's board, that being the Animate Dead and the Dark Side, so those are, well, essentially gone forever. The Necromancy that was from the Savine's Reclamation about an hour ago now resolves, and Adam decides to target Felidar Guardian from his graveyard. This resolves, and Adam blinks his commander. He then activates the negative 3 on Dahada again, since it was just recently blinked, and he reveals 4 more cards, an Ad Nauseam, an Abraid, a Valky God of Lies, and a Luxury Suite. He puts the Valky to his hand, the other 3 go to the graveyard, and Adam gets 3 more treasures. He then goes to combat and swings the crude up Heart of Kirin at Minsk, and with nothing left, he passes the turn to Nate L. Nate L goes to his turn, taps 1 thing for Tanglewire, and in his first main phase gets 2 mana from Mana Drain. He then uses this to help cast a Trinket Mage. The Trinket Mage resolves, and when it enters the battlefield, he gets a Graft Digger's Cage. He then uses the rest of his mana to cast the Graft Digger's Cage, not paying for Mystic Remora, and this successfully resolves, and with this cast, he's hoping to have saved the game at least a little bit. He doesn't have many cards in hand, and this Graft Digger's stops common wind lines in Dahada, as well as Aminatu, and stops a lot of value from the Minx Kimbu player. With that resolving, he passes the turn to Bill. Bill goes to his turn and takes the final counter off of his Tanglewire. In his first main phase, he plays Averting Catacombs as his land, and then recasts his commander by exiling a Simeon Spirit Guide and uses his Orcish Lumberjack to sacrifice the forest. He of course doesn't pay for Remora, and he then activates his plus one ability on his commander in order to make Boo a 4-4 hamster. He then goes to combat and swings 4 damage at Jordan, and with nothing left, he passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan goes to his turn and decides that the Remora has probably drawn enough cards, and he decides to let it go to his graveyard. He then plays a Scalding Tarn as his land for turn, and follows that up by casting a Draineth Magistrate. The Draineth Magistrate resolves, and Jordan, kind of being stopped by that Graft Digger's Cage at this point, discards down to hand size, and the cards he discards includes a Savine's Reclamation, and of course, Abdel. Adam then goes to his turn, and starts his turn off by crewing his Heart of Kirin with loyalty from Dahada. He then activates the plus two ability of Dahada on the Heart of Kirin to give it Vigilance and Lifelink. He then goes to combat and swings the Heart of Kirin at Minsk, and on the damage, he gains 4 life. In his second main phase, he casts a Tybalt Cosmic Imposter. He takes 2 damage from Ancient Tomb with this cast, and when that resolves, he activates the plus 2 ability of Tybalt in order to exile the top card of everyone's library. This includes a Deflecting Swat, a Mountain, a Zulaport Cutthroat, and a Lotus Petal. Unfortunately, you cannot cast cards from Exile with a Draneth Magistrate on the table, so he can do nothing with these cards at this point, and just passes the turn to Nate L. Nadal goes to his turn, takes more Mana Vault damage, and he then decides he's taken enough damage from this Mana Vault and casts Transmute Artifact, sacrificing the Mana Vault. It resolves and he gets a Mana Crypt to the battlefield, and he goes to pass the turn, and on his end step, Bill sacrifices his Verdant Catacombs in order to search up a forest to the battlefield. Bill then goes to his turn, and since there's no counter on Tanglewire, that can get officially sacrificed. He then casts an Elvish Mystic in his first main phase and follows that up by casting a Jeweled Lotus. 
He swings his 4-4 hamster at Jordan, and in his second main phase, he plays a windswept Heath. With nothing left, he goes to pass the turn to Jordan, and on his end step, Jordan for one mana casts a Dark Ritual. He then uses that three mana to help overload a Cyclonic Rift. Now at this point, he has gone through so many cards with that Mystic Remora, and everyone else is pretty much empty-handed, so this resolves. Jordan goes to his turn, and before he draws, he casts an Enlightened Tutor. He searches up a Mana Vault to the top of his library, and he then goes to draw that card for turn. He starts his turn off by casting that Mana Vault, and he then casts a Wishclaw Talisman. He goes to activate it, and in response to this, Nate L casts a Dress Down for 2 mana. This being the only piece of interaction he has at this point, he's hoping it's enough to get a card out of Jordan's hand so maybe someone else can deal with something that's going on. Before it resolves, Jordan activates his Sensei's Divining Top to rearrange the top three cards of his library, and he then taps his top to draw a card and put the top back on top. The Dress Down then resolves, and the Wish Claw Talisman then resolves, and Jordan searches up a card to his hand and gives the Wish Claw to Adam. Jordan then, for one mana, casts a Chain of Vapor, targeting Dress Down. Nobody has any responses, this resolves, and at this point there's nothing on Jordan's board that's worth bouncing, so Nate decides to not continue the chain. Jordan then plays a Mana Confluence as his land for turn, and he follows that up by casting a Corpse Knight. He then casts an Animate Dead, targeting Abdel, and well, the rest is kind of history. When Abdel enters the battlefield, the Abdel trigger goes on the stack, and Jordan chooses to exile the Animate Dead. When the Animate Dead gets exiled, Abdel goes back to the graveyard, and because Abdel leaves the battlefield, the Animate Dead comes back, and when the Animate Dead enters the battlefield, it retargets Abdel. Jordan can then repeat this loop an infinite amount of times, dealing one damage to each player with Corpse Knight, and eventually winning the game.